In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You're very welcome to this recorded service of Holy Communion today, uh, recorded here in the chapel at uh, Lis Escop. Wherever you may be watching this, you are very welcome to join with me as we join together in the ministry of word and sacrament and trust and believe that the Lord is present wherever we may be to bless us and indeed to feed us, even if we are unable to receive the sacrament uh, physically, the Lord is nonetheless present to feed us and to bless us. So be very welcome and be very at home today, not only in my presence, but in the presence of our Lord God himself. Love does no wrong to a neighbour and is the fulfilling of the law. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness, putting on the armour of light as revealed in the Lord Jesus Christ, acknowledging our sins in penitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And if you are able to do so, please join with, with me in praising our God in the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray the collect for today. Almighty God, who called your church to bear witness that you were in Christ, reconciling the world to yourself, help us to proclaim the good news of your love that all who hear it may be drawn to you, through him who was lifted up on the cross and reigns with you now in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so to the Liturgy of the Word and our first reading, a reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, so, you mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Now you, mortal, say to the house of Israel, Thus you have said, Our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, As I live, says the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. 
Turn back, turn back from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our psalm today, our verses taken from Psalm 119. Teach me, O Lord, in the path of your commandments. Lead me, O Lord, in the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. I shall keep it with my whole heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for therein is my delight. Incline my heart to your testimonies, and not to unjust gain. Turn away my eyes, lest they gaze on vanities. O oh, give me life in your ways. Confirm to your servant your promise, which stands for all who fear you. Turn away the reproach which I dread, because your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments. In your righteousness, give me life. And our second reading is a reading from the letter of St Paul to the Romans. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbour as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbour, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armour of light, let us live honourably as in the day, not in revelling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarrelling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we turn to our Gospel reading. Alleluia, alleluia. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. So hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus spoke to his disciples. If another member of the church sins against you, Go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, then take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there amongst them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And may I speak now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let me begin today by posing you a rather unusual question. What shape is the Christian good news? What is the shape of the gospel? 
It may be a strange question, but actually I think many Christians do think they know what shape it is, even if they find the question a bit odd. Most Christians think the gospel is heart-shaped, because of course it is all about love. But in all honesty, I'm not sure that's right. Now let me hasten to add that in saying that, I'm not saying for one moment that the gospel is not all about love. Of course it is. And frankly, Bishop denies gospel is about love would not make a good headline, and nor would it be true either. But does that mean that the gospel is heart-shaped if it is all about love? Well, I'm not sure it does, because that implies a, a, a perhaps a rather romantic, if not sentimental, idea of what the good news is all about. Take our readings today, and I think it's very hard to come to that conclusion. Let's start with the prophet Ezekiel. I'm sure you're aware of the old adage that the prophet's task was not just to foretell, but to forthtell, to speak out against present injustice, as well as to predict what was to come. And, the part, and that part of Ezekiel's calling is very evident here. And his forthtelling has a particular angle and slant to it. So you mortal, says the Lord, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. Now that is, it has to be said, a hard calling to warn a people of their own sin and wickedness, knowing that you will be blamed for their sins if you don't do so. And you can add to that rather bleak picture God's own conviction that even if Ezekiel does speak, the people are nonetheless unlikely to listen. Say to them, as I live, says the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways, for why will you die? O house of Israel. That does rather seem to presume that death is very much on the cards for this rebellious people. So what conclusion can we draw from this? It is surely that sin and wickedness and, dare we use the word, evil, are evident realities of life. And furthermore, these are not things that God tolerates. This is a classic Old Testament expression of the New Testament conviction that the wages of sin is death. And in saying that, we seem to be a, a very long way from that love heart that we spoke of earlier. And if we turn from the Old Testament reading to our psalm, we find something rather similar, even if the overall th feeling is, is rather different. The writer of Psalm 119, unlike the people of Ezekiel's day, seems to have a very tender conscience always wanting to do the right thing, but always faced with the possibility that he won't. Hence, perhaps, the, the sheer length of this psalm, the longest in the Psalter. Hence, the feeling at, at times of desperation in words such as these. Turn my eyes from looking at vanities. Give me life in your ways. Turn away the disgrace that I dread, for your ordinances are good. This is a sustained prayer of someone who knows weakness and the temptation that they will not do the right thing. And why is there such a sense of desperation in this? It is surely because the psalmist knows just what God thinks about sin and wickedness. The prophet Habakkuk, in the words of the authorised version, says of God, Thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil. Thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil. And that is surely what the psalmist knows too. And scripture pulls no punches when it comes to facing up to the reality of sin and evil and God's staunch stand against it. And the church of God needs to take full account of that. Our gospel reading does that with Jesus' clear instructions as to what is to happen to achieve reconciliation when there is sin within the life of the church. It is not to be swept underneath the carpet. There is a disciplined process to be under God. 
undergone. And if God does not ignore it, then neither can his church. And nor should we. These things matter. And they have eternal consequences too. Jesus says in the same context of hearing evidence and, and proof and judgment, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And even Jesus' famous words, where, for where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there amongst them, need to be read in this broader, rather bracing context of discipline and of judgment. And you can find this theme in our epistle as well, which talks of the coming day of judgment and the imperative to lay aside the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light, not in revelling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarrelling and jealousy. Again, this is pretty much a zero policy approach towards sin. And at this point, you might think perhaps that the gospel, the Christian good news, isn't heart shaped at all, but shaped instead like a judge's gavel or like a, the statue of justice, blindfolded and indifferent. And although we cannot stop there, there is nonetheless something important to be said. Our God is not indifferent to sin and injustice. Thankfully, he is not. He cares about such things, and such things are under judgment. However things may appear around us, we live in the end in a moral universe, because we have a God who cares about such things. This is not a place where anything goes, where in the end the law of the jungle prevails. This is a moral place under the authority of a God who cares about injustice and who will, in the end, bring his judgment to bear. So no, the gospel is not simply heart-shaped, but nor is it shaped simply like blind justice or a judge's gavel. It is about both law and love, love and law. Our epistle from Romans puts it like this, Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. And that, I think, squares the circle between the gavel and the heart. There is a law that can be so easily transgressed, but keeping that law is not, in the end, a matter of not breaking rules. Above all, it is a matter of love. For as Paul also says, love is the fulfilling of the law. And that, in a nutshell, is to be our task, to fulfil the law of God through our love. And in that, of course, we follow someone else who fulfilled the law through his love. But that is just what Jesus did, and that is just what Jesus did on the cross. He fulfilled the law with all of its demands for justice, through his love, as he took our penalty upon himself. He fulfilled the law through his love. On the cross, in the words of Psalm 85, righteousness and peace kiss each other. On the cross, law and love meet. On the cross, sin is dealt with. It is not ignored. But on the cross, love prevails over all. So the gospel is not heart-shaped, as if love is all that matters and sin is a thing of no consequence, but nor is the gospel gavel-shaped, all about justice, as if there were no mercy. Above all, the, the good news, the gospel, is cross-shaped, because yes, it is about sin and righteousness and judgment, but above all else, it is about love. And the gospel calls us to live cross-shaped lives. We're not to be indifferent to sin and injustice, certainly not in our own lives and certainly not in the world around us. We're to speak out against them, but we must do so with love. And we must always work to ensure that in the end it is love and mercy that prevails, that mercy triumphs over wrath. What we have known in our lives, the love of Christ triumphing over every wrong we have done, 
we must make known in the way that we live and act towards others. Not drawing a veil over injustice, but calling it out and challenging it, but always seeking to ensure that it is love that has the last word. And in the end, love will have the last word. And there is no hope for us and for this world unless we allow love to have the, the, the last word. Which is why week after week we come to communion, the Eucharist, which speaks to us so powerfully, both of our weakness and of our need, and of the cross-shaped love which meets our every need. Love bade me welcome, yet my soul drew back guilty of dust and sin. But quick-eyed love, observing me grow slack from my first entrance in, drew nearer to me, sweetly questioning if I lacked anything. A guest, I answered, worthy to be here. Love said, you shall be he. I, the unkind, ungrateful, ah, oh, my dear, I cannot look on thee. Love took my hand and smiling did reply, who made the eyes but I? Truth, Lord, but I have marred them. Let my shame go where it doth deserve. And know you not, says love, who bore the blame? My dear, then I will serve. You must sit down, says love, and taste my meat. So I did sit and eat. And today that same love which is ours in Christ invites us in all our weakness to sit and eat with him who bore the blame for us. So let us not hesitate today to come to his table to sit and eat with him for it is he himself who invites us. Amen. So I invite you now to join with me in affirming our faith in the God of justice and the God of love. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And as we have proclaimed our faith, so in faith we pray. Heavenly Father, through your prophet you have told us that you take, take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that all people should turn from sin and live. Help us to turn away from all that separates us from you and our neighbour. And of your goodness, show your love and mercy 
when we fall from grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those to whom we owe a debt of gratitude, especially those whom we often take for granted. We pray for our families and friends, neighbours and work colleagues, and all who have helped us in times of trouble, sickness, anxiety or challenge. We pray too for all who are separated from their families, friends or communities because of dispute, wrongdoing or argument. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have taught us that love is the fulfilling of the law. Help us to follow the ways of your Son, Jesus Christ, and bless all, we pray, who bring peace and healing into our world today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord and Judge of all, hear our prayers for all involved in the justice system. Be with those who support those who have been wrongly convicted, imprisoned, or held captive, and bless all on jury duty at this time, as well as judges, magistrates, lawyers, and all who are called to judge between right and wrong. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all affected by the coronavirus pandemic, for those who have died and those who mourn them, for those who are infected and asymptomatic, for those who are sick, and especially for those who are critically ill and for those who treat them and care for them. We pray to you for all searching to establish a vaccine and effective treatment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our prayers for the church throughout the world, we pray today for the church in South Africa, for Thabo Makoba, Archbishop of Cape Town. We pray for our bishops, clergy and people in this Diocese of Truro. And we pray today as we approach World Suicide Prevention Day for all affected by suicide. We remember those who have taken their own lives and those who mourn them. For the work of the Samaritans, suicide prevention team, and for all who work to support those living with mental health issues. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all compassion, grant comfort, strength and healing to all bearing sickness or pain. And among those who are sick, we pray for Judy and Lisa Gavelli, Brian Benny, Freddie and his family, Mark Hankin, Christine Whiteman, Trevor Roberts, Jennifer Hicks, Martin Beard, Joan Greenwood, Liz Wallace, Tanya Hallam, Primrose Peacock and Jay. We pray too for all in hospital today and for those awaiting operations or undergoing medical investigations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all life, you have promised eternal life to those who believe. Hear us as we remember those whose earthly lives have ended. We thank you for our own departed loved ones and friends, for those who have died recently, and for those whose anniversaries of death occur at this time, remembering especially Vera Littlejohns, Margaret Griffith, Frederick Gooch, Emily Kearns, Jacqueline Walker, and William Fear. And rejoicing in the fellowship of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace.
he has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. And wherever you may be today, the peace of the Lord be always with you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness, granted by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, according to mind, his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body. 
because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. And so as I receive physically, may you too be fed on the life-giving body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. God, our creator, you feed your children with the true manna, the living bread from heaven. Let this holy food sustain us through our earthly pilgrimage until we come to that place where hunger and thirst are no more. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ, through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. And may God bless you in this weekend. Goodbye.